just got finished uh, moving the cows and watering them. I wanted to show you this, this really cool plant. This is a currant bush. We didn't plant it, and it wasn't here just two or three years ago. You can see the little berries here, bright orange. We've had several of these currant bushes growing on our property um, on and off. I say on and off because they've popped up on their own, but then the cows have bitten them off. <laughs> but this currant bush um, is, is growing huge. It's spreading. And those berries, mm, the one I just ate, amazing. It's difficult to describe the flavor of a currant. Something between a citrus and a cherry and a grape. Tangy, mm, that's good, really good and good for you. Please, please don't rely on me for identification, but you can see the shape of the leaves here. If you're looking for currants, you'll see that it kind of has this this three-pointed shape, like a, like a maple leaf, but it's not pointy, it's kind of wide. And it does grow like a bush, in other words, from multiple, multiple points straight out of the ground, not from a single trunk. And then of course the berries. Now this is a, now I'm going to assume that this is a golden currant. But can you see the little lines around it? Now, I do realize that a lot of wild berries have these lines, but with the shape of the leaf and those little lines combined, and they're very seedy inside. So if you squish one and see that it's full of a lot of seeds, it just might be a current. It, it, it can be really dangerous actually to, to eat something that you don't know is edible. So don't do it. Don't do it unless you absolutely know that it is what you think it is. I happen to know it's a current, so I can eat it. Wow, I'm so excited that we have that. <laughs> Several years ago, I purchased this old coal from a neighbor. On his property was an old uh, blacksmith shop. In fact, not only did we get this coal, but we also got some other cool things that I'll show you. Some of you may know just what this is, just by looking. Now more of you may know. <laughs> but this is an old bellows, and a huge one at that. Look how big that is. So cool. I've, I've watched some videos about how these things um, work and how they're made. Um, they're quite complex. Um, I used to think that it was just two pieces like this, but there's actually a third piece in the middle. Um, so it's a, a double chambered bellows. Uh, looks like they, they've repaired this with strips of, of iron. And I'm not surprised knowing how, how complex they are. I have high hopes of, of someday restoring this kind of on the list, you know, on the long list of things to do. But uh, I'm gonna move that into a shed just to keep it out of the rain so it doesn't deteriorate, deteriorate further. And uh, if I can get it to work, that would be awesome. If not, it would still be a really cool artifact to, to have hanging on the wall or something about <laughs> the fireplace. Sometimes I'm a little bit surprised to see what people are willing to get rid of and throw away, essentially. But uh, I'm also grateful that people get rid of things. I'm grateful that not everybody values the same things. I think it's fun to take things that people don't, don't really want and see if I can find a use for it and maybe repair it and uh, make something beautiful or useful. So I've got all this coal that I need to use up. Well, I also went and bought these at a at someone's uh, yard sale, just old pieces of railroad line out of which I'm going to make um, several anvils. It, it's not steel that's easily easily come by which is why uh, a good big anvil is very expensive these days. Now, I'm no expert at all but I know that uh, just from some research that uh, 
that the railroad ties are the right kind of steel. Maybe not the right kind of shape, but that can be dealt with. So that's more of a, a preview of things to come. But if you combine those two elements with what I have here, which is several stacks of bricks from an old school that was torn down um, in the area. So sad, <laughs> but we're glad that we were able to get some bricks. Um, now I've sorted these into bricks that um, are mostly, uh, I mean, they're useful. They're, they're rated for outdoors, but they're, they're more decorative. I mean, they're, they're structural, but, but decorative. Uh, these ones here um, are good for making a kiln or a furnace. So, so that is the plan. <laughs> We've been making uh, rocket stoves and furnaces for many, many years. We've done, uh, made lots of different designs and taken them apart and made new ones. And uh, I consider myself a tiny bit of an expert on the subject just because I've tried it out so many times. Failed several times, had some really good ones and uh, actually took them apart just to, in the effort to to make them even even more energy efficient. So I'm gonna do the the outdoor um, blacksmithing forge or furnace and then the indoor rocket mass heater, which we've adapted to our own use and it's basically our own design. And uh, we will get to that uh, relatively soon in our videos. I feel like this, this shed is like the perfect combination of, of art and homesteading also in this old shed, which I need to organize a little bit, <laughs> I have a number of sheets of this two inch foam. We use this below our concrete floor in the house. We're going to do the same thing over on this side of the house. We have no interest in finishing this because this will all, we're going to strip off the, all, this four inch foam. This stuff down here is just temporary because we're going to close in this whole area from uh, uh, five or six feet from that corner straight out here and then all the way over here. So be, uh, basically a big square and it'll serve as a, a family room, a music room and library. Um, the plan is to uh, have the roof extend from uh, about here Finger is and slope downward and we'll have exposed beams in the ceiling but um, anyway uh, speaking of those sheets of, of insulation so we'll flatten it out put down the the foam and pour concrete on that so anyway um, super excited for that project that'll happen as I said this fall <laughs> all right looks like most of the family is in here which actually usually happens in the mornings <laughs> Check out these awesome things Lord Jean's been making. And this squish, it's so fun. We were just talking about them like they look, they look like candy. They're so delicious looking. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly the they, strawberries they like... and stuff. Oh, kitty. They're so awesome, honey. <laughs> My favorite is this. Eventually, them. it's going to be a sunflower. And so once I, like, I'll curl the, this metal to be like you know rings like that <laughs> and then they'll hang oh like a three-part uh -huh. kind of oh uh -huh. that's awesome and is this a three-part also do, do, do. no it's all one piece oh that's one holy cow they're so awesome and there are banjos hers are all glazed they're nice and pretty they're pretty <laughs> This is the most ridiculous, dramatic maybe, review maybe I've ever read. About what? <laughs> About a uh, yeah, we'll screen out. protector. Oh. <laughs> this $8 product saved me from replacing my entire screen. I slowly peeled back the screen and was filled with joy. I haven't felt joy like this since I opened up my Nintendo 64 one 1990s <laughs> Christmas morning. Thank you for your service, tempered glass screen protector. Oh my goodness, that was great writing. <laughs> <laughs> There's not
not much left of our little pond right now, but <laughs> it's okay, ducks. Sorry, I kind of snuck up on them. Hey, chicky. <laughs> anyway, the plan is to have this whole pile removed, um, scoot it out to parts that are a little bit low, maybe where we will eventually be building and we need the land built up. And uh, we're gonna make this pond even bigger. I want to have, have the pond go out to the edge of this tree there. And our ducks will be happy about that too. But I don't, not only the ducks, but um, once we get more surface area on that pond, we'll be able to uh, pump water out of it and uh, water our fields, which are actually right now, or in a, a week or so when we get that stuff back there baled, uh, that would be the time to, uh, to water it thoroughly. <laughs> also, we have cattails, which are super useful. Pretty cool. to can these because canned beans are so cheap and we go through them so fast but um, we really love to eat them raw and surprisingly these three plants that came up have been more than enough to, to let us all eat as much as we want it's very satisfying eating out of the garden <laughs> Hi. Hi, Smeagol. You being a jungle cat today? We've even got a jungle chicken. This always tends to be the time of year when I kind of assess things and, and see what potential there is for for things to be done. I do most of my work in the autumn. Uh, <laughs> maybe just because the, the weather is nicer. I can do a lot of heavy lifting outdoor projects that I that are kind of miserable to do in the in the summertime and winter. Um, some things just aren't possible in the winter. Concrete work outside for example. Um, but I, I do tend to just go around and kind of assess and make a mental note and me mental list of, of things to be done. Um, so this wasn't uh, contrived at all, it was, this is actually what I was going around uh, the property doing today. I'm just looking at things and deciding what, what the next few months are going to look like. But uh, anyway, if there's anything I could uh, leave you with, it's just the thought that if it wasn't for potential, potential growth and potential projects and things to keep us excited and uh, just looking for, forward to the future. I, I think I'd, I'd be bored to death. I, I'm grateful to have a lot of work to do. I'm grateful to have um, so many uh, blank canvases, so to speak. If we ever finished our house or our property, well, that'd be impossible <laughs> because every time we would finish something, uh, we'd we'd still just create new things. I'm so excited to spend the rest of my life creating. We've got such big plans, not only for for this house, but uh, this property and our whole lives. <clears throat> if you look at your own life and think it's not what it should be, think of the potential, which is completely endless. So I'll leave with you, leave you with that thought, and uh, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.